Welcome to the Journey Center. We're so excited to have you with us this morning and hope you enjoy every facet of encountering God and His people. Here at Journey, we like to say, embracing the presence, empowering people, and impacting culture. To better introduce you to our community and how you could become a part, we'd like to share with you three important pieces of our culture here. The first is Journey Juniors. Journey Juniors is our kids' ministry for birth through grade four. Our kids have a time of free play, worship, snack, interactive lesson, and an activation that ties it all together. You can check your kids in at the check-in desk in the main foyer from quarter of to quarter after each service. Our nursery and pre-K classrooms are open at the 8.55 a.m. service, and all classrooms through grade four are open at our 10.55 service. You will receive a security tag when you check your child into Journey Juniors and will bring that tag back to pick them up after service is over. This ensures that each child is only released to their parent or guardian as safety is of utmost importance to us. We know your kids will love Journey Juniors and will walk away full of God's presence and a greater knowledge and practical encounters with Him. The second piece we'd love to share with you is our Journey Groups. Journey groups are groups that meet different nights of the week across our region in different homes and provide a place of community, connection, growth, dialogue, food, fun, and so much more. Groups are open to adults 18 and older, and some groups have availability for you to bring your little ones along. For more information on locations and how to get plugged into Journey Group, email us at info at journey-center.com today. Our final point of connection we'd like to share with you is serving. Serving is one of the best ways here at Journey to get to know our regular attendees and guests, make new friends, and to get plugged in. We have a variety of ministries for different interests, gift sets, and availability times. We share more details about each of these serving teams at our Join the Journey event every other month. For more information on Join the Journey and or serving teams, email us at info at journey-center.com. And check our monthly calendar right on our website, www.journey-center.com. Thanks for watching and thanks for joining us for our impact service this morning. Good morning and welcome to Journey Center this morning. My name is Tony and I'm going to be hosting this morning, so I'm excited. We've been uh, pursuing a series on the Generations of Family series and we're going to close out today with the Silver Foxes. So expect the unexpected. <laughs> so I'd like to invite you to stand and worship. Amen.
reach deep, God. We invite you deep, God. We invite you deep, God. Would you come? Come, Lord. Like you promised, come fall upon us, come like you promised. actually we get to participate in a place of encounter with a risen living Lord don't look at us don't look at Randy that I've been playing this crazy music for 40 years with don't look at Tim that he's older than dirt itself and I've been playing with him for over 40 years but see Brian has just discovered the kingdom and I want to tell you today that no matter if you're Jerry or Scott or Tim or Randy the kingdom is full of life and empowerment and freedom. I don't even know if you expected to come into worship today and get wrecked like this and get stupid like this. Pastor Scott's being stupid, right? I like to say that little children actually exemplify the kingdom brilliantly. But today, this does not have to be my song. It doesn't have to be Jerry's song. It can be your song. So invite him so that you can encounter him personally yourself. And it can happen right now. It's the kingdom is now. The kingdom is forever, but the kingdom is right now. So sing this with me. Let's close our eyes. Why don't we raise our hands? If that's appropriate for you, let's just raise our hands. Come home like you promised. Sing with me. Fall upon us. Fall upon us. 
Come like you promised. Come like you promised. Come fall upon us. One more time. Come like you promised. Come fall upon me. Fall upon me. Fall upon me. Come like you promised. Come fall upon the Let's give him, let's just give him a clap. Can we do that this morning? Okay, don't judge me. Can't touch this. Somebody said that. How many are glad you belong to him? Yeah, let's do this song. Let's do this song together. Welcome the guys, if you would. This is the best music ever. <laughs> you certainly had the hair. Unless it's... <laughs> These can't be dead again. Oh, I got it. Nothing wrong with a little silence. No, a a little silence is good.
Holy Spirit, come on. You are welcome. Hmm. Deep within us. You're welcome in this place. Surround us, overcome us, overwhelm us with pure love. Every single person has to do something with an encounter with you today. Jesus, you're beautiful. Glory, God is what our hearts long 
that does the unexpected. You're a God of new things. And I thank you, Father, you're doing a new thing as your Holy Spirit fills this place. Holy Spirit, fall afresh on us. Holy Spirit, come awaken us. Holy Spirit, awaken passions. Holy Spirit, awaken dreams. Holy Spirit, awaken relationships. Holy Spirit, awaken your church. Holy Spirit, awaken your nation. Fill this place with your presence, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for being a father of new things. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. 
You may be seated. This time of our service, we like to continue our worship by giving back to the Lord with our tithes and offerings. So I invite you to, to pray with me. Father, as we continue to worship you this morning with that which you've given us, with our tithes and our offerings, and we say to you, Papa, tell us what you might want us to do this morning, what you might want us to give. Father, we give this morning with hearts of thanksgiving and hearts of generosity. We give this morning knowing that we're sowing into good ground and they are faithful to take what we give and multiply it. to uh, make a special welcome to those of you that might be visiting us here in Journey Center for the first time. We'd love to get to know you a little more. In front of you, there's a card that if you can fill out, just give some uh, information about yourself. And we have a great incentive to fill the card out. If you fill the card out and take it to our Oasis bookstore, it's right by the coffee shop there, we'd like to give you a complimentary book, CD or DVD. Also, there's a welcome package, for, again, for any of those that uh, are new with us today. So this is the closing uh, of our series on generations on uh, the family. And if you hadn't noticed, it's all about the silver foxes. <laughs> Yay. So Scott was going to just have a few additional instructions, but he stepped out. Is Scott there? <laughs> hey, uh, uh, yeah. We'll get him. <laughs> Yay! Welcome, Austinian leader, Scott. How many of you really wanted to jump when I was jumping, though? You really wanted to? How many wish you could jump when I was jumping? <laughs> Me too. A year ago, I probably wouldn't be able to do that. So, hey, um, just real quickly, there's... A whole page. So let me just do it really quick. Next Sunday, we have been invited to have what you just experienced here this morning. Shimon County's invited us to do this at the fairgrounds. So, so, yeah. So, we have a sound company coming in. We're going to worship our socks off. If you don't wear socks, you'll be worshiping your shoes off. But we're going we're gonna to come, and here's the deal. Next Sunday, 
We're gonna have only one service. It's gonna be at 11 o'clock. So our nine o'clock folks and our 11 o'clock folks are all gonna be at the fairgrounds. You're gonna enter into gate one with praise, gate one at the fairgrounds. Everybody say gate one. Gate one. Say 11 a.m. And that's the time the service starts. You might want to get there early. We're going to be in the grandstands. You're going to be parked behind the stage, in the, in the, in the field behind the stage. And we're going to, the whole place is ours. And we're inviting all of Shimon County and the fair and all of the people from sheriffs, state troopers, all the people that work at the fair, they're all going to be there. So next Sunday, what time? We're not going to be here. We're going to be at the Shimon County Fairgrounds. What gate? Gate number one. On the... 13th, excuse me, on the 12th is our festival. So on the 5th, we're going to go and be the church. And on the 12th, we're going to go be the church. But before we go be the church, we're going to gather as the church on, say this with me, August 11th. It's a Saturday at 9 and 11. We're going to be here. Okay? We're going to prepare here to go to the fairgrounds again for the I Matter Festival. And we're going to love on 10,000 kids this year. All right, so we get to be the church two weeks in a row. Out of, out of the, every summer, we get to go and just be the church. So everything we learn during the year, we get to go be the church these two weeks out there. Of course, we're the church all the time anyways, but you know what I'm saying. So a couple other things you need to be aware of. Before we have the festival, we have to pay for it. So on August 7th, say August 7th, at the first arena, at 5 o'clock, we're going to bring lots of money because we're going to buy things at the, at, at, at the banquet. Then we're going to have the banquet. And then after the banquet, there's this band called Rust. Yes, they are old. That's why they're named Rust. So, so, so we're going to, we're going to start, we're going to, anyways. So anyways, so they are going to be playing afterwards. Listen, we're going to have a banquet. 400 people are going to be there. We're going to have 50 tables. And what we'd like you to do is, if you today would be willing to invest 30 bucks into these kids, into our community, into stopping suicide, into stopping the heroin epidemic. And let me tell you something. It's working. Suicide is stopping, and so is heroin use stopping. It's working. But you can't quit. You can't give up until the fat lady's singing. And we don't have any fat ladies, so it will never happen. All right, so, so listen, listen, Tuesday night, say Tuesday night, first arena. How many of you would be willing to either come or fill a table or 50 tables of eight people? Raise your hand, raise your hand. Any, that you would come or at least yourself or that you'd bring and fill up, because here's the deal. Every, every 30 bucks saves 10 lives. It's a great investment. And you're going to hear from great men. There won't be a dry eye in the place, I promise. And you're going, to be, you're, going to be, you're going to encounter the love of God, and you'll be able to share something with all the kids on Sunday. So please, please, please make every effort. Today in the foyer, please sign up for that, if you would. See the beautiful Dave King um, afterwards. Um, if you want to volunteer for the festival, you have until um, July or August 1 to do that on our website. Say this with me, imatterfest.com. imatterfest.com. And if you mess up and it's imatterfest.org, you can still get there. Okay? All right? I love you guys so, so very much. Oh, volunteers. Forgot. Volunteers. We need 10 volunteers every night to serve the fair. And here's what you get to do. From 6 o'clock until 10 o'clock, you get to be with amazing people watching tractor pulls and watching demolition derby cars and eating horrible fair food. And then here's the beauty. At night, when you're all done, you get to clean up everybody's garbage. So if you're willing to serve our community and let the love of Jesus be seen while you dance at the fairgrounds, sign up for Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, or Saturday night. See Dave King, and he'll tell you the times. And uh, I just love you guys. Thank you for loving so well. Bye. We bring gloves for everybody picking up garbage. Just saying. I see the sun waking up the morning, reviving dreams. I feel the wind on my back with promise, reminding me. This is 
the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Let your faith arise. Get your hopes up. Our God is for us. Hey, 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 how's everybody? Silver Fox is Sunday. Come on. Come on. It's, hey, I'm Manny, just being on my name is, and say that with me. Yeah, you, you weren't named that. I have to spell with my first and last names for people. Anyway, so guys, um, we've had a great time over the last five weeks during our four, this is the fifth week of our family series. And during the family series, um, a different generation hijacks the service, all right? So if you're here, this is your first time here. This is a little different for us, but we're having a great time with it. Uh, how about that band tonight, or today? Silver Foxes Band. Are we calling it the, the Scott Lowmaster Band? I'm not sure what we call that. So, uh, great. It was just good to have those guys here. The first uh, Sunday of our series, actually, we had some amazing folks. Meg and the Journey Juniors were here. Yeah? They did, they did a, a message called Two Kingdoms. They talked about the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of darkness. Right, you guys are right on it. So that was awesome. You guys rocked that. Um, the second week was Journey Force. Our, our younger folks, our teens, Curtis and the team, you guys did an awesome job with that. Thank you so much. They talked about God's love reaching down and how it touches us. Talked about righteousness, peace, love, mercy, his promises, and being royalty. It was really a good time. How am I doing so far? All right. How are you doing so far? Good. The next week, <laughs> the next week our, was our highway young adults group. You guys rocked it too. So that week they talked about God's authority to rule. And between Ryan, Amelia, Allie, and Stephanie, they nailed it talking about the kingdom of God and God's ruling through us. Really good stuff. Anyway, last week, nobody can forget this. Scott talked about being smeared with God, right? What a good word. And he even handed out a little, what is that stuff? Smear, whip, I keep, can't think of that. He smeared some whipped cream on a few of you who were close to the front. So the, the danger zone is right up here. So anyway, oh, anyway, it was an awesome time. And this morning, the Silver Foxes are here. We are going to share a little bit with you about hearing the voice of God to conclude our series. So we're really looking forward to that. So I'm going to ask our panel. We're doing a panel this morning. I'm going to ask our panel to come up and join us, if you would, please. Come on, panel. Let's give them a hand as they come. Yeah. So our theme verse this morning for this is, take it from John chapter 10, my sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me, Jesus said. So a great verse of scripture, we're going to talk around that theme this morning, and I'm going to ask each of the panel members if they would start simply by introducing themselves to us so we know who they are. Do you know these guys? Some of you do. Bob Jones. I'm Jane Rundle. Hi, I'm Dottie Rice. Good morning, I'm Bruce Sharp. Let's give them a hand. Hey, hey, guys, welcome. So, so um, one of the things to understand starting off about hearing God's voice is how do we not, what are some things that just kind of we need to just be aware of? One thing is God is always kind. When we're going to hear his voice, his voice is kind. He's in love with us. How many of us know he's in love with you? You know that? He's in love with you. He's good to us. He's happy with us. So one of the things we realize when we're hearing his voice is he's seeking after us. He wants to have a relationship with us. So let's, let's deal with, take the shame and the scolding out of the picture, shall we, as we seek his face and do that. So we're going to ask some questions together today. And one thing that I want everybody to understand as we start is everybody here can hear God's voice. 
all right? Everybody here, there's not, so I don't hear God's voice well. We're going to talk a little bit about that today because you do, and he's helping us understand. We hope we can add a little bit of light to that. Sometimes we just need to learn how. Sometimes we just need to discern a little bit better. Um, and so this morning we're going to give some insight, hopefully, to you from our, how many years of experience? Anyway, forget that question. <laughs> a bunch, a bunch of it. Anyway, so we're going to ask a couple questions, and hopefully you're going to gain some enlightenment from what the Lord is going to say through these guys. So you guys ready for question number one? All right, here's question number one. It's a multiple question. Question. So when is the first time you know you heard God's voice? What happened? Where were you? What did he say? And what effect did it have on your life? So since I have the mic, I guess I'll start. So I, was, I think I was about 12 years of age, um, thereabouts. I didn't go to church, wasn't brought up in the church. Um, was invited by some friends to go to this thing called Youth Time in Buffalo, New York. And they had everything going on. Bowling, swimming, basketball. I mean, I loved it. I was a sweaty little kid. Um, but then they forced us to go into this uh, auditorium and seated up in the second balcony up high. Um, I thought I was going to go to hell if I didn't get down at the altar call. And literally, I couldn't wait to get down because I thought I'm not leaving this building. I thought I'd die and go to hell. So this was probably the first time that I ever heard anything about being saved. But there was another experience that I had when I was in ninth grade. I was on the wrestling team, and uh, I was getting ready for my match, and I was watching all these fathers with their sons. And some of you know my story, I didn't have a father. So I was looking around, and I was watching these guys, and I said, oh, that must be what it's like to have a dad, have a father. <clears throat> and something spoke inside me. It said, I will be a father to the fatherless. I didn't know the word. Where did that come from? So that was the first time I heard. Um. I was one of those raised in the church, <laughs> so, and I always had a, a kind of a, a, a neat, intimate relationship with the Lord anyway, despite of the church, <laughs> but, but I wasn't aware of, outside of reading the word, which is important, of the Lord speaking to me, but um, when I was 18, I entered into the realm of what you call Pentecostal church, and, um, and I... Um, and I was 19 at the time, and I, was, um, I had uh, a relationship, and, and uh, he called and said he needed to talk to me. So um, something in my spirit kind of went, ugh. <laughs> something wasn't feeling right. So I just started praying, and, and in my mind, you know how your imagination goes on scenarios? <laughs> That's how my mind works. I had this whole scene of what he was going to talk about. It was a form of kind of deception and betrayal. And, and, um, and I, uh, you know, the whole thing came. And then the Lord said, are you willing to forgive him? And I, and I wrestled. I thought, hmm. And, and I, knew, I knew what he wanted. And so in the wrestling, I says, yes, Lord, I, I, I give it. I, I can forgive him. And so when he came to talk to me, sure enough, exactly what I saw, he, taught, he told me and, and asked if I could forgive him. And, and, and because of the Lord's beautiful way of speaking to me and letting me know ahead of time I had already released my heart to forgive him and and it was really cool because it released him and he really went on to do some great things so it was good I was brought up in the church as well and around all of the things of God all of my life um, and when I was about 10 or 11, um, I responded to an altar call at a series of revival meetings in our church. And what I want to say about that is I did not know that I was hearing the voice of the Lord at that time. 
But in fact, I was because I was compelled to go to the front of the church as a young child. And um, a man of the church uh, that I respected was there to pray with me. And um, he helped me to understand what it was I was doing. And he spoke to me from Romans 10, 9 and 10. And that verse has stuck with, those two verses have stuck with me all my life because it says, if you will confess Jesus Christ as Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the mouth you speak unto salvation and with the heart, and I can't get the rest of it, but those two verses. And so I, I knew what that meant and I did not know until later that, that I was really hearing God's voice. But what the first time I became aware that I was hearing God's voice, I was a whole lot older. And I was newly baptized in the Holy Spirit and attending a Women's Aglow Fellowship retreat, which probably only a few of you have ever even heard of. But I was at this retreat, and there was a young woman there speaking, and Toward the end of her uh, talk, she said, I want each of you to ask the Lord to tell you a couple of things about yourself. And I was like, I, I don't know if I can do that. How does that work? Um, because I had never thought of it in that way that God would actually speak to me. But so I asked, just like she told us to, and sure enough, he said something to me. Now, I am a very down-to-earth, no-nonsense kind of person. So that's the way God spoke to me. <laughs> and he said to me, you are honest and forthright. And I was like, forthright? What's that mean? And so, you know, I've had years to figure that out. But uh, he said that very specifically to me, and I realized... I could hear him actually just speak to me because I asked. And the one thing I want to add to that is sometimes we're hearing the voice of God and we don't even know it until we've done something or followed through or not followed through. And we're like, oh, that was God. So be listening. He's always wanting to speak with you. Amen. Well, I heard the Lord's voice for the first time, April Fool's Day, 1975. And 42 years ago, I was a Vietnam vet, angry, bitter, and suffering from PTSD, where it was pretty much nightmares every night. And in that process, I decided to turn to drugs and alcohol. And I was in it for a number of years. And as most of you probably know here, it really didn't cause anything to go forward. It caused everything to go backwards. And in that process, my brother, who got saved a year before me, came to me and told me how to get saved, shared Christ with me. And the next morning, I went in my bedroom and I kneeled down, and I says, Lord, I don't know how to pray, but I do know that I'm a sinner. <laughs> I don't have any problem with repentance. But God, if you're really the God of the Bible, if you're real and you're raised from the dead, I want to know you. And immediately I had this voice come to me, said, you fool, who the heck do you think you're talking to? There's nobody there. There's nobody going to answer. And uh, even though I didn't know God, I knew that that was not the Lord. <laughs> it wasn't kind or compassionate or any of those things. So I said, shut up, devil. And I got up and I went out. And you know, there was no lightning strikes or thunder crashes or anything like that. So I sat in my house for about three days, really not doing much of anything, just kind of trying to listen and so forth. And on the weekend, 
I had like 15 of our friends called me up and gathered me uh, to go to a Jay Giles concert. <laughs> There's a couple of silver foxes back there. <laughs> so we went and did the pre-concert party, got stoned out of my gills, and uh, the problem was the concert got snowed out. They couldn't make it in for the concert. So here we are, loaded, no place to go. So we decided to go to the movie, The Rock Opera Tommy, which I highly do not recommend that for anybody. You know, you, you almost have to be a drug addict to picture what's going on. But in that process, when we were in the movie, every time they showed a scene in the movie, I know now it was the Lord, but um, he showed me a different scene, which I immediately knew was the kingdom of God. And he kept doing that all the way through the movie. Show me the drug scene, show me a kingdom scene. And when I heard the voice of the Lord, he said, choose. So clear that I thought it was, you know, audible. Choose. And I said, Lord, I choose you. And uh, I believe that I was actually saved right there in that movie theater. And, uh, you know, it was an interesting thing when the lights came up after the movie was over. You know how you gather with your friends and you look at each other and talk about how the movie was? My best friend, who was actually with my brother when he got saved, when the lights came up, he turned and he looked at me. And without even saying anything, he said, it's happened to you too, hasn't it? And so moments after getting saved, I was able to testify to the glory and the praise of God. Amen. You know? Amen. Praise God. Let's just take a moment right now, shall we, before we like go too far? Because amazing how God can speak to us while we're speaking to you. He's speaking to you. So let's just pause right now. Could we just bow our heads for a moment? It's a thrill to realize that we had different testimonies here from four other people who are, that are different from yours. And yet God is speaking to you. And I'm wondering when you first heard God speak, what did he say? Maybe right now you're here and you're looking for the clarity of his voice to you, or maybe you're just wondering how to hear, or there's some gunk in the pipes, and you can't hear clearly, and you want to get rid of that. So, Holy Spirit, thank you that you're here. It's like the song, your presence is here. You've invaded our atmosphere right here. And we invite you through the rest of this discussion to open our ears Open our eyes, change our hearts. Thank you for your peace. And maybe because there's been a theme right now already of saying, inviting Jesus to come in or got saved, we don't talk a lot about that specifically on this panel. We hadn't planned on all of that, but maybe this morning the Holy Spirit is wooing you to say, Jesus, come into my life. All you have to do is open the door, and you can come. Yeah. Amen. You guys rocked. Thank you. That was good. So good. Question number two, you ready? Yeah. All right. Here we go. What are some ways God speaks to you? You can be answering these questions yourself as we're talking about them. Amen. Um. I believe the most important thing for me is to be intentional about my time with him. Um, I believe in the first fruits. So I believe that, you know, early in the day is best, but that's probably immaterial. The most important thing is to just set aside that time. I used to drive Pastor Scott nuts with, I always say to him, you got to go to the mount. You got to go to the Mount of the Lord. And I believe that's really true. 
that we have to intentionally set up set up a time where nothing else comes in, no distractions, nothing else. It's the Lord's time. And in that time, I always find that the Lord is faithful to speak to me. I agree with what he said about setting aside time um, to listen when you're in the presence of the Lord. Because if you don't listen, if you're just babbling your prayers the whole time, God doesn't have a chance to speak because he's, not, he's a gentleman and would not interrupt you. So, so stop somewhere along the way and listen uh, for him to speak. And I think one of the best ways that I hear from God is that inner voice, that inner knowing. Um, and um, it, it's almost like I carry on a conversation inside myself with the Father. So, although there are times when, and I will speak of one in particular, when I get verbal about it, and um, there was a time when I was, my husband and I were in a very difficult situation, didn't know what to do next, and I was out walking one day, and I was upset because it didn't seem we had any answers. And so I was talking out loud. I was by myself walking, so I wasn't. I was talking out loud to the Lord as I was walking. And remember, I'm honest and forthright, and all that was coming out. And, and so I was saying, okay, God, so what are we supposed to do? And it was, I said it just like that. And... Um, and you know what? He didn't mind that I said it that way because he knew that's how I was feeling on the inside anyway. And you know what? He spoke right back to me immediately. And I'm going to tell you what he said because that's for another thing. But he spoke immediately to me. It wasn't the audible voice that my husband heard when he was called to ministry, but it was almost as if it was because I carried on. I was verbal. And God was all but audible in my spirit. And he gave me very clear instructions. And I went right home, wrote it down, told my husband, and we acted on it immediately. Um, I agree with them. It is so important to have time with the Lord. Uh, intimacy comes to mind because in our intimate place there's a constant um, knowing of his presence your ear is open more and but I want to talk about many ways because God speaks to me in really a lot of different ways <laughs> over my life you know I just shared one of the first time is he'll give me a scenario a vision or whatever of as a warning or as a, something I need to be prepared for. Um, and, and so I, I'm able to know. Um, I, I can have um, a hard time really hearing him. And, and some things are, are, we're stubborn, so we have a lens that, we're, you know, we can't really hear the truth in there. So a lot of times he'll wake me up with a dream. Um, I can't manipulate the dreams. And, and most of my dreams are warnings to me of, of something I'm out of balance with, something uh, for, you know, that I need to, you know, it's like, okay, I get it, I get it. Because <laughs> it's usually kind of a scary kind of dream, but he's showing me something in that. Um, another way is in my spirit, I'll have that troubling or that something in my spirit. So I, I'll begin to pray in the spirit, and then he'll, he'll speak to me in that. Uh, there's sometimes a knowing. I'll just have a, a knowing of something that I shouldn't necessarily have. And therefore, to, to let me know how to minister or how to pray into something. Pictures. In our minds, we can have a picture of something which he's trying to speak to us uh, about in, in the metaphor 
uh, meaning of the picture. Um, those are just quite a few of the uh, ways I find that, that I can't put them in a box. You know, whatever the situation is, um, he can speak. Yeah, I, I agree with everything that's been said here. Certainly a certain period of time to take away. And I'm in the morning, too. It's just I need to have my first meeting of the day with him. I just have to meet with him before I move it, go anywhere else. I have to have my ears open and listen, be expectant to hear. I don't do it perfectly, but I do it. I just do it. Um, and First Kings 11, Elijah was looking for the voice of God. And he said, is it in the earthquake or the wind? You remember the, the scripture? It was in the still, small voice. And that's probably the best way that I hear, I think, from him. But there's other ways, certainly just talking with anybody. God can use that. I mean, he used an ass, right? Okay. <laughs> he can use anything. If we're listening, if we're opening and willing to obey, um, he'll speak to us. He's always speaking to us. Thanks, guys. Awesome. You know, um, everybody can hear God's voice. We have to take a little time to listen sometimes. <laughs> And sometimes maybe you say, hey, I don't really hear God. Well, there was a young man, his name was Samuel. He was in training for ministry as a young boy with Eli the priest. And he didn't, he'd never heard God's voice before. And that may be you too. You may say, you don't hear, I don't hear God. It's nothing that happens to me regularly or at all. Well, listen to this. Um, in 1 Samuel chapter 3, it says, now the boy Samuel, a young, he was a young boy, was ministering to the Lord before Eli. Eli, again, is the priest who was training him. The word from the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were infrequent. And it happened at that time as Eli was lying down in his place. Now his eyesight had begun to grow dim and he couldn't he see very well. The lamp of God had not yet, yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. That's when the Lord called Samuel and said, and Samuel said, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called. But he said, I didn't call. Lie down again. So he went and laid down. So again, he thought it was Eli calling him, but it was actually God. He never heard God's voice, so he didn't know what to do. He just went to Eli, figured Eli was calling. So he said, so he said um, here I am, when God called again. He said, you called? You called me again? But he said, I didn't call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down again. And the Lord called yet again, the third time, okay? So he didn't get it till now the third time, right? So he said, Samuel. So he rose and he went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he answered, I didn't call. Lie down, my son. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor had the word of the Lord been revealed to him. So the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and he went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli discerned that the Lord was calling the boy. So he'd woke him up three times now. <laughs> it's not me. So, so the, Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. I think that's a great thing, a great way to respond, isn't it, when God's speaking to us? Lord, I want to hear your voice. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. He didn't know what to say. Eli told him what he should say at first, you know, to respond. But he responds with his heart. And the Lord said to Samuel, behold, I'm about to do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. So he'd never heard, and now he hears. And it took him, what, three times? How about you? Simply because we don't hear God maybe the first time or the second time. The Bible is so clear about the fact that we just keep coming. He keeps coming. My sheep hear my voice, he says. I know them, and they follow me. Yeah. A huge, huge, huge thing to do. So um, we've heard a couple things today about this. So let me ask you guys, what is your, your go-to? So let's say, for instance, there have been you haven't heard God's voice in a while. That happens sometimes to us, right? Haven't heard God's voice in a while for a while. What's your go-to? What is it that you do to maybe help stir your heart up to hear a little bit better? 
Bruce, you have the mic? I guess the first thing that, that I do is I check my spirit. I check my life. What, what, is there something blocking my hearing? Am I holding animosity towards somebody? Have I spoken wrongly to somebody? Have I acted in a wrong way? You know, cleanse the plate. You know, it's kind of interesting. I was washing a, a window this morning, <laughs> and I, I thought about, while I was washing it, about how I couldn't see through that window very well. And as I was cleaning the window, just simply the revelation that was coming about cleaning our lives sometimes and just kind of getting focus. And, and it, there was so much revelation that came from just washing a window. And I only had two cups of coffee. so. <laughs> <laughs> but I think having, um, ha- having our plate clear, I, continuing to seek him, staying in it, knowing that he is going to speak, or he is speaking and I just haven't caught the vein yet where he's at. And um, sometimes it's turning the plate over, you know. It's the fasting. Sometimes it's like, you know what, I just need to pursue him and see what he wants to do. Um, my go-to kind of is, is you know, the quiet place. Um, because I find that, you know, for me, because my mind is so active so many times, um, I just need to sit. I need to sit and just soak. Just let his Holy Spirit come and just just kind of soak on me. Um, you know, sometimes in reading the word, you know, just letting the Holy Spirit just soak in that as well. Um, and and just for me, it's just being aware. <laughs> you know, just being aware of his presence, you know, because he's always with us. No matter where we are, he'll go into hell for us. So no matter what circumstances we are in, I find that if, I, if I'm just make sure I'm aware of, of his presence. Um, yesterday in preparing, um, I was uh, for J.U., going over some of the books, and there's this quote in here that said, to know God is to love him. It really highlighted when I went over. (laughs) To know God is to love him, and to love him is to abide in him, and to abide in him is to know his heart for us and for others. You know, and, and I realized, you know, that that's what it's all about is the abiding and just letting that presence um, where you're always open to hearing what he's having to say to you at the time. It's going to be the same pretty much for all of us because that's the way you do it. <laughs> um, you get alone with God. Somehow, Uh, I'm a person that stays busy. I'm a doer person. And so for me to sit and be quiet and do nothing is really a challenge because I don't do it easily. So I have to, you know, order myself around (laughs) and make myself get distanced from whatever or whoever is distracting me because I'm distracted but that's the thing that is often the most necessary. One time, I had to, when we were, this is years ago, when we were in another church, and I was supposed to speak that night, and I just wasn't getting anything. And so I just left the church. I drove up to Harris Hill, and I sat on a swing with my Bible and a notepad. And I was there, I don't know, an hour or so. But it was very rewarding because the distractions were gone, the people were gone, and I could really just concentrate on what are you saying, God? And and really listening is a real challenge, again, as I said before, to listen, to take time to listen, because when you do, 
He's ready. He's ready to speak when you listen. It's good stuff, huh? I'm not all that spiritual. I just take my cell phone and call him up, right? Everybody knows God's phone number, right? Jeremiah 33.3 is God's phone number. And he says, call to me and I will answer you. And I have learned a long time ago that God is faithful to his word. If he says something like that, he will perform it. And so that's... I'm simple, but that's what I do. I call them up. Jeremiah 33, 3. <laughs> that's great. Ring, yeah. ring. <laughs> you know, one of the things God said to me once was, and this was, this was real clear. We were driving across the Main Street Bridge in Elmira, and I was stewing over something, and God spoke into my heart, my ears, my whatever. He said, what I have spoken, I have spoken, and what I have said, I will do. And I have clung to that many, many times over the years with what God might be speaking to me. And then later I found out it was actually in the scriptures. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, uh, wow, the fact that he's speaking all the time simply means that we need to learn to catch what he's saying, right? To be able to realize that one of the ways I do that is a journal. I have a journal because, okay, if God is speaking, no. Because God is speaking, right, we're always not on the same frequency. We're busy. We get distracted. Nobody here does that, right? Get busy, distracted. It's like, oh, I only have a few minutes today to, for, to squeeze you in, God. Okay, well. So I've learned that we need to set aside time. Could we have the opportunity to be able to hear the voice of God, to be, have an appointment with the king of the universe every day? So I encourage everybody to do that. You know, hindrances like busyness, we just got to, like, let that stuff get away. And so we seek first the kingdom of God. You know, I love that. In his righteousness, all these things get added to us, you know. So sometimes we just need to quiet down. I'm going to just read something really quick to you because um, this is something I have at my, I have a little a desk in my room where I meet God. And this sits in front of it, and I wrote this like a couple years ago, maybe. Because I like to set a timer, okay? So I have a certain amount of time. Here's how I'll I'll read this to you. I often set a timer, not because I, I am controlled by time, but because I want to be free of it. I actually don't have to think about time again until it goes off. I don't want to become time bound when I don't need to be. But I need a reminder that brings me back into time from the boundlessness of eternity so I can bring heaven's resources to bear within the limits of time. I've learned that I must make choices from outside my relationship with time that are governed by the eternal purposes of God. The only way I know to do this is to step outside the confines of time and give full attention to a relationship with the one who controls time and speaks eternal life into it through us. Yeah, it's all right there. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I read it. I read it word for word. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the the beauty of that is, I turn off my phone. Okay, this it doesn't work otherwise. So if you you got to be connected every minute to everything, sorry, this isn't going to work real well for you because what we're saying is other voices are more important. And sorry, when I'm with God, my notifications turn off, my ringer is off, my phone is not going to be answered. I don't even know you're calling, all right? Why? Because I'm with the one who speaks to our hearts from eternity so I can be more for you because he fills me with you, with what he has for me, for you, you know? So this morning, just to remember this, God's kind. He wants to speak his kindness to you. He's in love with you. (laughs) He wants to speak to you so he can share the love of God, his love with you. He's good to us. He wants to demonstrate that goodness to us day by day. He's happy with us. You know, God, no matter what's going on in your life right now, he's happy with you. He's a loving God. He really wants you to know him in a deeper way. He wants you to hear his voice. 
So could we just do this? Could we just bow our heads before the Lord for a moment? Let him speak. I'm sure he already spoke to you this morning through worship, through the panel, through the word of God, which is his primary way of speaking is through his word. Get into his word. It's called the word of God. He's called the word of God, and he's speaking. So this morning, what did you hear? If you were listening, you heard God's voice this morning. What did he say? And how are you going to respond to what he said? We just close our eyes, put our hands over our hearts, and just say, God, speak to my heart. invite you if you want to hear God's voice more clearly I'm just going to ask you to stand where you are right now just say God I want to hear your voice I want to respond I want to be one who is governed by the voice of God that your voice Lord would be so real some of us this morning are looking fine on the outside but you're desperate. Something's happening in your life, you're desperate. Some of you are facing tough decisions right now. Others are facing major choices that you have to make that could or, can, would definitely alter the course of your life in some way, and you need to hear his voice. Others have already heard him in the past, but for some reason right now, it's foggy, and you're not responding or hearing what he wants you to say to you. So you're missing that voice. You're missing the times when he's spoken to you in the past. And this morning, he's stirring you back up to say, come, son, come, daughter. Or maybe today, this is the first time you've heard his voice and you've come seeking and saying that you want more of him. So God, here we are before you right now. Speak to us. Help us to quiet ourselves day by day. Even as Jesus went apart, that we would go apart as well. I'm going to invite our panel to come down front. If you, and those of you who maybe you're going through something this morning, maybe you just want to hear God's voice more clearly, God's prompting you to respond somehow to his voice I'm going to encourage you to step out from where you are and come forward and we'd love to pray with you just lay hands on you ask God for an increase of the spirit of revelation that his word would be more real his voice would be more real the situation you're in he'll clarify what you should do through his word so step out and come we'd love to pray with you this morning Thank you, Manny. I just encourage you to respond to the Holy Spirit as he prompts you. Those that tug in their heart want to say, yes, Lord, I want more. I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you clearly. I have a situation that I need to have someone pray into. Just come forward and let these folks pray for you. I'd like to thank you all for coming this morning. I invite you back for our six o'clock impact service. Our senior leader, Scott Lowmaster, will be sharing with us. Next Sunday, 11 o'clock at the Chemung County Fairgrounds. Don't forget. And um, be blessed. Have a great day. You're dismissed. <laughs>